Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. Starting from day number 101, about four days ago, today is our lesson number 105. Starting from day number 101, we began discussing the notion of rational number and irrational numbers. If you have not watched the if you have not watched the videos of day number 101 and 102, make sure you watch those videos first before you continue with this video. Today we're going to do some exercises about 10 problems where we will identify whether the given quantity is a rational number or an irrational number. Let's begin. Like I said, not not too many, just about 10 quantities, and we will have to make a decision whether quantity that is given to us is rational or irrational. Therefore you have to understand how to identify a rational number, how to identify an irrational number, and uh, what characteristics they possess. And we learn those things, as I said before, on day 101 and 102. Here's the first question. 2.6666 forever and ever. Is that rational or irrational? Well, there are a couple of ways we could identify it. One straightforward method here, one straightforward way here, is to simply realize that, that is, it is true that it, it is a non-terminating decimal. It is a non-terminating decimal. In other words, it never ends. The bloody thing goes on forever. But, but, there is, there is a pattern, but there is, but there is a pattern. Even if it is a non-terminating decimal, even if we have a situation on our hand where the decimal never ends, but as long as we can identify a pattern, it is a rational number. We learned that on day number 101. It is a rational number. And therefore, it is a rational number. That's it. That, that part is done. That's the end of that discussion. The question was, is it rational or irrational? The answer is, it's rational because it has, it has a pattern. That's it. With that, we are done with it. As far as the question is concerned, we are done. And therefore, we could continue here. And therefore, it can be, if we wanted to, it can be represented as a fraction. Any rational number can be, a rational number is one that can be expressed as a fraction. 2.6666, as we know, 2.6666 as we know is equal to 2 and 2 thirds because that's what 2 thirds is. This part is the 2 third part. And of course that is simply 8 over 3. It can be expressed as a fraction. It was a rational number. But we didn't have to do this part to realize that it's a rational number. Just by visual inspection, in a matter of a split second we can tell that it's a rational number because it's a clear pattern here. Even though it does not end, there is a pattern. Number 2. Question number two, seven times square root of 11. Seven times the square root of 11. Well, seven, seven as we know, is a rational number. What about square root of 11? Well, the square root of any prime number, any prime number, square root of any prime number is an irrational number. If you take a square root of any prime number, you will see that if you express, if you try to express that in, in a fraction, one number over the other number, it will ne you cannot do that. And the reason you cannot do that is because the decimal that you get there after the whatever the whole co whole quantity is, uh, you will see that the decimal goes on forever. Not only the decimal goes on forever, but there is no pattern. There is no rhythm or rhyme to it. And since there is no pattern, we can't write it as a fraction. We can't write one number on, over the other number. Uh, we cannot express that as a fraction. It is not a. It is not a rational number. The square root of any prime number is going to be an irrational number. So even though seven is rational, the square root of eleven is irrational. And product of rational times irrational is always going to be irrational. This quantity is irrational number because it's the product of a rational times irrational number. Number three. Number three. 1 over 7. Rational or irrational? If somebody were to come up to you and ask you, 1 over 7 is a rational number or irrational number, you better you 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 will be you'll be 
uh, well within your rights to tell the person that it's a very idiotic question that you just asked me. It is a very silly question. It was a pretty moronic question, in fact. Why? Because what is a ra what is a rational number? We just talked about it. A rational number is something that can be expressed as a fraction. Right here, the bloody thing is being expressed as a fraction. Since the since since the bloody thing is since the bloody thing is presented to us as a fraction, of course it's rational. Of course it's rational. Because that's what a rational number is. A rational number, the reason why a rational number is so called, since we're talking about it, let's let's take digress for a second. Rational rational number it is so called because it is a ratio. It's a ratio of two quantities. Rational number is so called because it is a ratio of two quantities. It is a fraction of it, since it's a ratio, it's a fraction. It's one to seven. It's a ratio. This is this has to be a rational number because it's, it's, it's a ratio of two numbers. It has to be a rational number, and therefore, be, and therefore, now we go on. Now we go on. This part that we're doing is not necessary for the question itself. The question, the answer is, it's a rational number. But because now that we know that it's a rational number, therefore, it must have, it must have, it must have either a terminating, terminating decimal or a repeating pattern. Because it is a rational number, because it's a rational number, therefore it must have either a terminating decimal or a repeating pattern. In other words, if you were to divide out, if you were to divide 1 by 7, it will either end someplace or if it doesn't end, a pattern would begin to emerge. I want you to do it yourself, just to, just to convince yourself. I want you to do it yourself and you will see that it does not have a terminating decimal. It does not have a terminating decimal. It never ends. It never ends ever, 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 ever. But it does have a repeating pattern. The repeating pattern is 1 over 7 is going to be equal to 0.142857. And after that it will repeat. It will repeat itself. So that pattern will go on forever. 142857, 142857, 142857, until the cows come home. Amen. I meant to say forever and ever. I meant to say forever and ever. Amen. I don't think the priest goes around saying until the cows come home. Amen. That's not what I meant to say. Let's go on, shall we? Number four. Forever and ever. Amen. Number four, negative 97.35. Rational or irrational? Let's erase this part. Let's erase this part so we can, since it's already on the blackboard, since it's already on the blackboard, I'm going to make use of it. Is, it, is this quantity rational? Is this quantity rational or irrational? Well, we can clearly see that it ends right there. We can clearly see that that thing ends right there. There is nothing after that. It has a terminating decimal. Because it has a terminating decimal, because it ends, it is rational. And because of the fact that it has a terminating decimal, we should be able to write it as a ratio of two quantities. Let's do that, shall we? We should be able to write it as a ratio, even though that is not necessary here. Nobody is asking us to express this as a ratio of two quantities. Nobody is asking us uh, to express this as a fraction. We are simply being asked, is it rational or irrational, to which the answer is, it is quite rational because as we can clearly see there is a terminating decimal. It ends right there, 0.35. That's it. That's the end of the story. That's much, that's how, do, how, how do we go about converting this as a ratio? It's very simple. You take the quantity and however many decimal places we have here. Here we have 2, 1 and 2. So let's multiply top and bottom by 100. We have not changed the quantity. We are simply taking the quantity. We are simply taking the quantity 97.35, negative 97.35 and multiplying it by 100 over 100. That's all we're doing. Multiplying it by 100 over 100, which is just 1. So the 100 times 97.35 is going to give us 9,735 9, 9, 9, 9, with a negative in front over 100. There you go. We just did that. We expressed that as a ratio. We expressed it as a fraction. 
9,735 over negative 100. 9,735 over negative 100, if you like. Or we can write, express that as negative 9,735 over a positive 100. Or infinite other possibilities. We can multiply both top and bottom by 2 and there'll be another fraction. We can multiply top and bottom by 3. We can multiply top and bottom by 37 and it will still be the same fraction. It will still be the same ratio. Do you understand? Let's move on. Number 5. I'm taking too long. I'm going at a too much of a leisurely pace. I'm going to pick up speed. We're going to pick up speed because otherwise the video will be too damn long. Number 5. Number 5 actually is quite straightforward question. Square root of 7. Rational or irrational? Of course, square root of 7 is irrational because we learned that the square root of any prime number, the square root of any prime number is irrational. And 7 is a prime number. Let's move on. In other words, if you would express this as a decimal, square root of 7, if you would express that as decimal, it will never end. It will never end. It will be a non-terminating decimal and there will not be any discernible pattern. There will not be any pattern. There will be no repeating pattern. It will just go on forever and ever without any rhythm or rhyme. Do you understand? Let's do one more. Number six. 89 over 152. Is that rational or irrational? Again, that's a damn silly question just like before. Of course it's rational because it's being re represented, it's being presented to us, it's being presented to us as a ratio. It is being presented to us as a ratio. Of course if it's being presented to us as a ratio of two quantities, then of course it is rational number because that's what a rational number means. Rational number means it's a quantity that can be expressed as a ratio of two integers. It is rational because that's what it is. It's being presented to us as a ratio of two integers. Therefore, therefore, it must... So as far as the question is concerned, we are done. We, uh, we answered the question, the question was rational or irrational. The answer is, it is quite rational. It is quite rational. So as far as the exam is concerned, we are done. We're going to go on and do some extra work now. And therefore, because it is rational, therefore, if you were to divide it out, if you were to divide 89 by 152, if you were to divide it out, it will have either, either a terminating decimal, in other words the story will end someplace, it may take a long time for the story to end, but it will end someplace, or it will have a repeating pattern of decimals. It will have a repeating pattern of decimal, one or the other. If you wish, you could do this yourself. It will be an interesting exercise. You might want to do it yourself, but then again, you might not after you find out what exactly is going on in the next five seconds. If you were to do it out yourself, you will see that there is no repeating pattern. But you mustn't be, you mustn't be too hasty. You mustn't be... Uh, too impatient to, to, to arrive at the conclusion that there is no repeating pattern and therefore it is, uh, it is uh, irrational because obviously it is not irrational, it is a fraction. If there is no repeating pattern then it must end somewhere, somehow, someday, some century. Let's find out what this is. This is going to be equal to 89.1 89 over 1.152 is going to equal to, if you were to do it out, you will see that it is equal to 0 0.58552631. I'm putting this line underneath it just for visual uh, uh, facilitation so that it's easier for us to see, so that I don't mess up any, digit, uh, mess up any digits. 5789, 5789. And four more to go. Four, eight, five, zero. Voila! It ended. It ended. We got a zero at the end here. That's the end of the story. But it did end, even though there is no repeating pattern. Well, as long as, as soon as you see that there is no pattern there, then it must end. It must end. 
it has to end because it's a fraction. If it's a fraction, if you can express it as one integer over the other integer, then that quantity must always either end someplace or must have a repeating pattern, one or the other. Do you understand? It is a rational number. It is a rational number. Let's keep, carry on then. The reason I'm making such a big fuss about this particular example is because as I was preparing for the lectures for this, uh, for this topic, I was browsing through the YouTube myself to see what other people had to say on the topic. And I came across one video put together by a teacher for, for his students in the school someplace. And he must have, what, what he must have done is that he must have come across or he maybe randomly picked these two numbers and put it in the calculator and he found out that it was going on forever and there was no pattern. And therefore he concluded that uh, it is an irrational number. It cannot be an irrational number, it's, an, it's a fraction itself. The reason he did not see any pattern is because there is no pattern, but it has to end. The reason he came to the conclusion that it will never end is because in the calculator cannot accommodate so many digits. Most calculator will give you up to seven or eight digits and that's it. So you will never see a zero at the end, but it does end. It does end. A fraction can never be irrational. We should understand that part. If something is presented as a fraction, how can it be irrational? That is, that is the definition of a rational number. It, it is a ratio. It's a ratio of 89 to 152. Number seven. Number seven. In number seven we have 1.037. Again, again, in order to figure out if something is irrational or irrational, it has to have either a terminating decimal or a repeating pattern. There is no repeating pattern here, but it does have terminating decimal. It ends. And because it ends, it can be written as a ratio of two quantities by simply multiplying the top and bottom by 1000. We multiply top and bottom by 1000, we are not changing the value of the quantity. It is still the same quantity, 1.037, because we are simply multiplying it by 1. 1000 over 1000 is just 1. And if you do that, you will end up with 1037 over 1000. There you go. We just expressed it as a ratio. We just expressed it as a ratio and therefore it is quite rational. Number eight. Number eight. Number eight, number eight, nine, and ten. We'll talk about three quantities, and there are many more. There are many, many more in nature. But these are the three most popular quantities that one observes in nature that one, co one comes across in the mathematics textbook when one is discussing the notion of an irrational number. The most famous, the classic example being the pi. What is the pi? A pi is a ratio. It's a ratio of two quantities. It's a ratio of two quantities. It is a ratio of distance, distance, around a circle to distance across a circle. So if you were to draw if you were to draw a perfect circle, if you were to draw a perfect circle and it has to be a perfect circle, if you were to draw a perfect circle, which this one is not, if you were to draw a perfect circle, then locate the center the distance across the center, which is this distance right here, which is what we call a distance across the circle, which distance from here to here, which is what we call the diameter to distance across the circle, distance across the circle, which is what we call the circumference. What, what is a pi? A pi is simply a ratio of circumference to a diameter. No, you might be tempted you might be tempted at this point to say that because we, because it is a ratio of two quantity, therefore is there is a rational number. Yeah, but what are those two, two quantities? That's where the things get prickly because it turns out that if you were to take these two quantities, whichever circle that you take here, and if you were to divide the circumference by the diameter, you will see you will see that 
it will never end 1.1415 1. 1, 1, 1, something you will see that it will never end if you will divide this quantity by another quantity it will never end it has no repeating pattern and therefore it is irrational it is irrational not rational it is irrational The ratio of these two quantities cannot be expressed. It's not, it's, it's not a quantity that can be identified, that can be pinpointed with precision. Even the most powerful computer on the planet cannot give you, it sounds strange, is even the most powerful computer on the planet is unable to quantify the distance around the circle being divided by the distance across the circle. Because it goes on forever, it never ends and it has no pattern. It is an irrational number. Let's talk about the next one. As I said, 8, 9, and 10, they are, all three of them are natural phenomena. The next one is E. E is the base of natural logarithm. Base of natural logarithm, E is approximately 2.71 a2, now you might be tempted now, 8, 2, 8, 1. It still wouldn't matter because we need still a 7, 1 in front of it. It doesn't, it doesn't repeat itself. 8, 4, 6, I'm not even sure if I did it correctly here. Let's just leave it as 2.71. 2.71, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 1, 8, 2, 8, 4, 6. Yes, it goes on forever. As you can see, it goes on forever. It has no pattern. It is a non terminating decimal with no pattern, no repeating pattern, and therefore it is an irrational number. It is an irrational number. Finally, I want to talk about number 10. Number 10 is something that you will not come across. Of course, pi, you have to know, you have to understand what it is. Based on the natural logarithm, you have to understand, because these two concepts actually do, do appear on the exam all the time. SAT, SAT, T is GMAT, GRE, so on and so forth. Uh, oh, more on some and, and, and less on the other, but they do appear. But the last concept that we'll discuss is something that you don't have to worry about it. It, it, it will never appear in any of these exams. So if you've if you never heard of it, don't worry about it. I'm just going to discuss, discuss it very quickly. And that is what is known as what is known as the golden ratio. It is called golden ratio because it's a ratio that for some strange reason nature is in love with. Lots of natural phenomena observe this ratio. Quantity. If you take two quantities in a given, given creature, uh, for example, let me give you a simple example. For example, in our hand, if you take, not, not the thumb obviously, because thumb only has two bones, but if you take any of the four fingers, and if you, do, if you were to divide the length of the two part, two top bones by rather the length of the whole finger by the length of the two top bones you will see that that ratio is fixed similarly the length of our body from the navel to our base from our feet the, the, our whole length of the body divided by the length of a body from the navel to the feet that is also the same ratio if you take a look at the butterfly if you look at the shells a lot of sea, sea creatures. If you look at uh, uh, Milky Ways, this phenomenon, the golden ratio that is, is observed in many, many things that nature has created and therefore it is called the golden ratio. If you want the exact ratio, by the way, before I forget it, it is it, this base of the natural logarithm is represented by the letter E. The ratio of circumference to diameter is represented by the Greek letter pi. This is represented by simple E. The golden ratio is represented by the Greek letter phi. Not pi, this is pi. This is simply pi. And this is phi, P-H-I phi. And it is represented... Let me just do the capital phi. It will be easier. Capital phi is this. And if you, a small letter phi is something like this. Phi is pronounced. And if you want the exact value of it, the exact value of the phi is the exact value of the phi is 1 plus root of 5 1 plus 
root of 5 over 2. And because, because we see root 5 here, which is a prime number, a square root of a prime number, square root of a prime number is an irrational number. The fact that this is rational and this is rational doesn't matter. A rational number plus irrational number plus a rational number becomes irrational number. An irrational number divided by a rational number will still be an irrational number. And this quantity is approximately equal to 1.61, 1.16. Eight zero three four, and it goes on forever. It goes on forever. Down the road, and when I say down the road, I don't know how far down the road. I might even decide to make the video tomorrow. I don't know yet. But one day, even though it does not appear in any exam, any exam because it's such a fascinating topic, one day I do actually intend to make a video on golden ratio. And when I do that, most likely, most likely I will call it day number. Today is day number one hundred and five. This will be the very first video in the last series, day number 201. Even if I make the video tomorrow on this concept, I'm going to call it day number 201 because it's going to be our very first video in the third series and the third part because it's a three-part series from day number one to day number one to 100, from day number 101 to day number 200, and the final series is going to be on day number 201 to 300. I'm going to call it day number 201. 201. The very first video, as I said, in the last volume, the last part of the series, of a three-part series, because it's such a fascinating topic, and I want to go. I feel like I want to go into detail right now, and I want to talk a little bit more about it. But we're not here to talk about golden ratio. We're simply here to rec to be able to recognize whether a given quantity is irrational or irrational, and the answer to this quantity is that it is an irrational quantity. It never ends. It is an irrational quantity because the decimal never ends. It's a non-terminating decimal with no repeating pattern. One more time. It is a non-terminating decimal with no repeating pattern. Just because it's a non-terminating decimal does not make a quantity irrational. As, even if it's non-terminating but there is a discernible pattern, then it's rational. It can be expressed as a ratio of two quantity. This cannot be expressed as two quantity. This cannot be expressed as, when we say two quantity, we're talking about two integers. Of course, not like this. Golden ratio equals one plus root of five divided by two. This is the precise quantity. This is the precise value. But it cannot be expressed as a ratio of two integers. I have talked enough already. I have spoken too much already. I'm going to stop now. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.